Greetings fellow mages, Exalt here, back again with another Magic Mana Strike video. You are looking at my alternate account, the one that I created for the sole purpose of making the video called Beginner's Guide. I've taken interest into grinding for this account and right now I am uh, at rank 6 with 1510 points. The account has been maintained as an absolute free to play account. And you know what? It seems to me that even if you're going free to play, you still stand a chance in, in terms of being competitive for as long as you have the skill and the knowledge to compensate for the lack of quality in your equipment. I still miss the goodies that I get from the Magic Pass, but I've managed to sweep ranks one to five with relative ease. And you know what? That's what I'd like to talk about. The moment I stepped into rank 6, that's when things be became really interesting. Um, I found that my my uh, deck, you know, its shortcomings are starting to become more apparent. But I think I have the advantage of being able to play the game for several days now. That's why I've managed to rack some victory. Although I also have my fair share of losing, as you can see. Right. But I'm... I win more than I lose, and it's been fun. Uh, again, I, I miss the goodies from the past, but with enough knowledge and skill, you know, you'd still be able to make some headway in this uh, in this game. And that's the topic of today's video. How did I manage to uh, move up that ladder? So it took me about a day and a half to move to rank six. I can't really dedicate my entire days to playing this video game because I also have a day job. <laughs> Gotta pay the bills, you know. Um, but uh, in revisiting the first few ranks, ranks 1 to 5, I've realized that there are plenty of beginners that who could perform better if they really know the basics. So hopefully you guys have watched the previous videos. If not, today I'm going to teach you another um, strategy or another part of your techniques which can help you become uh, a winner in each of your matches. All right. It's not a guarantee but it can increase your chances of, of winning and what I'd like to talk about today is proper positioning. So you've heard me talk in the past about the archer and tank strategy where you put your tank in front and then an archer at the back, right? So that's what we're going to see, plus the positioning technique which I employ in my games. Please be mindful that I've only been playing this game for a couple of weeks now and I do not consider myself an expert. I am beyond, uh, not not beyond, I am, I am just like you guys, you know. I've just started out, I still consider myself uh, a newbie. I make plenty of mistakes, but you know, I, I watch my my replays and I learn from those mistakes. All right, so we're playing against a red deck, and as you can see, this guy also knows how to employ the tank and um, archer technique. So he's he's going to use the goblins to poke, and looking at the, my hand at the tray, seems like I don't have anything to counter what's coming in front of me. Or do I? Let's see what I'm gonna do. So to sort of um, distract him, I decided to just put the messenger down at the bottom. And then, notice what I did. Take note of the positioning, right? I have the skull catapult placed right over here. And then I have another creature up top, right? And they are not in the same alignment. Right. I want to make sure that the that only one of them gets to um, attract the enemy forces, and I've also placed my Vraska right over here because his creatures have already committed to um, the other creatures that I have placed on the field. So Vraska right now is just taking some free hits. And okay, so did we win that exchange? Considering that the tower is now down to 50% health, right? 
We did. Because now we have a force that's pushing. He does not have any mana left. He's going to drop the Vexing Devils. But that's not enough. I don't think that's enough to wipe out my entire army. Plus, I have Sleeping right there. It's my Messenger, which is going to wake up in a few. And he won't have anything to defend himself against it. Split pushing really does a lot of wonders. What you just saw is um, Vraska's ability. When she dies, she sort of explodes. All right. Now, uh, what I did was I used the skull right here. I placed it right over here to serve as my archer. And then I have Vraska right over here to take the initial tank damage. Now, Vraska's skill right here, right? When you can see allows her to maneuver to a different position even after dropping her and she becomes temporarily um, indestructible during that state but i like it because what it does is allows you to adjust and reposition and again just take note of how things are positioned right now they're not in alignment to with the with, a, with a guardian right what i do most of the time is place my other creatures on the side right so so that they are not in a, in a straight line if i have a player or if i have a character from the opposing team that has an area of effect damage those creatures are not going to take the same damage right at least not all at once because they're not in the same line all right notice what i did there i just moved back because i now have a few of those creatures that have spawned because of the um, catapult, uh, skull catapult. Remember earlier, he was, he was ahead of the game, right? As far as the health of the guardian is concerned. There he go, he pokes again. That, that was kind of late. What I wanted to do really was to place the skull catapult, which is a building in front of these goblins so these goblins only know how to destroy the buildings but they've already committed they've already latched onto the guardian so uh, really can't do anything about that and i also dropped the hedron scouts um, just to see if i can destroy those goblins again those goblins are very sneaky their life bar is you know it's it's very deceptive so we're now making a bit of a push right here I need something to defend the tower with from a flying creature, so I've chosen Vraska. Notice that uh, every now and then I'd put something here at the bottom just to distract the opponent. Boom, 96 points. Another one ratchet bomb and it's, uh, it's a goner. So we need to find a way to either destroy the main guardian or this other guardian at the bottom. The spirit was too late. But Vraska has already made some great damage. And not only that, we've also managed to wipe out the uh, tower at the bottom. And this is looking to be a solid win for us. As if I don't know. This is a replay, right? I already know what's, what's about to happen. So positioning is key in order for you to get the advantage, right? So don't put everything in one line. Take advantage of the sides um, and allow your opponent to be drawn towards that area, right? It, it is shorter traveling uh, straight line, right? So if you make your opponents travel to the side or if you make your, your opponent's characters travel to the side, then, then they essentially they, they've traveled longer, which is great because they, you know, the longer it takes for them to reach your tower, the more damage they will receive from your creatures, right? The more protected your, your tower is, okay? Um, not all creatures or not all spell, not all planeswalkers, huh, not all planeswalkers will be as maneuverable as, as Raska. The only other one I could think of is um, Chandra Nalar. Her ability to jump onto one particular area, right? Allows her to demonstrate that maneuverability as well. But you don't, even if the planeswalker that you've chosen is not as mobile as, as Vraska, right? 
you can still take advantage of the knowledge that positioning properly can lead you to victory. It won't rhyme if it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, I hope you learned something from this video. It was short and sweet. Again, this is just the alternate account. Um, I am going to end this video by playing a live match. At this point, the tutorial is now over. Stick around if you want to learn some more. Um, hopefully, I get to win this battle, right? Because I don't want to re-record uh, a winning match. But the, the matches from rank 6 have become challenging. And, you know, the apparent deficit that I have with the equipment that I bear is, you know, it's, it's starting to show. Okay, and we're playing against a mono black mono black uh, player if you have comments make sure to put them in the comment section down below if you you know if you if you find that this is helpful please subscribe to my channel and uh, give this video a thumbs up oh we will we'll need to defend against this big this big guy right here let's do some circle of pain See, positioning, they've already latched on to, I need Vraska. They've already latched on to uh, my, ta my catapult. Great work. Oopsie daisy, let's move away from there. Okay, nice. The messenger, we're just gonna move it a little forward. Now my Vraska is still alive. Okay, and we are going to defend with the Skull Catapult and Vraska here on the side. And because the opponent has already, um, the, the opponent's creature has already committed to um, attacking my other creatures, it won't really, um, it won't really make uh, a difference. Oopsie. I mean, it won't be able to attack any of my other um, creatures because it's already latched. Oh my. He's strong. Very strong. We'll use Braska. And put this accursed spirit on the side. Let's see if Braska can join that group right here. And then Skull Catapult. I didn't even pay attention to my Vraska on top. I, I didn't know it was already, it has already uh, destroyed the tower. Let's put something beefy here. I'm gonna reposition. Uh huh. And then we'll put the messenger. Whoo! Man down to our last one twenty more seconds can we win this let's paint him whoo man Just to card it. See, I don't, I don't keep them on the same line. Same line. Ah, that's a zero. That's nothing. gonna take more than just that to destroy my guardian yeah right it's beating to it come on come on
Nah, it's a draw. <laughs> uh, it's very difficult. I just, I didn't realize that it's going to be difficult to, <laughs> to try to do a live commentary, especially in English. Huh? <laughs> That's it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is Exalt. I'll see you in the next game or next video rather. I'll see you in the next one. Exile signing off. Peace.